Good afternoon, Monsignor. How are you? Yeah. Uh, my name is Nam, and it's my great honor to have the opportunity to talk with you tonight. Uh, you were chaplain of our Vietnamese Catholic community when we gathered in Separate Heart Parish some 40 years ago uh, to attend Masses and then consequently form the organization. We are very grateful of your love and care, especially in granting us the center in Bali Street, Mount Loli, to facilitate our traditional and cultural activities. To mark the 40th anniversary of our community establishment, we would like to ask you if you could be able to spare a few minutes to share with us your thoughts regarding our Vietnamese Catholics and our community. I'd be happy to do that. Well, as you know, it was uh, 1984 uh, when I went from Mirabuka Parish uh, to uh, the Sacred Heart Highgate because the, the parish priest, is Archbishop Hickey, has transferred to be Bishop of Geraldton. And when I arrived at um, Sacred Heart, I found to my surprise that I was also going to be the Vietnamese chaplain. No one had told me that. But Sister Patricia already had a, a room at the back of the presbytery. And of course, Sister Patricia was the archangel of the community, wasn't she? So it was a wonderful experience and I enjoyed it very much. I found the, um, the many of the, of the leaders were, I think, previous um, officers in the South Vietnamese army fighting the Viet Cong. And they were very strong men and strong people. But I used to be very impressed with the children with their little uh, dressed like Boy Scouts or girl, girl Guides coming into the church and so on. But of course, Highgate Church is not a very big church. But then when we had the Christmas Masses, they were quite huge. And I, I noticed then there were quite a few Vietnamese Buddhists who were at those Masses as well. But I, I, in those days, the, um, uh, the Vietnamese were the first real Asians to come to Australia in the sense the other people who had come from Asia were Anglo-Indians or Anglo-Burmese. In other words, they were Eurasians. But the Vietnam, so for that reason, I think the early Vietnamese had a very hard time. There were signs up, Asians out, if you remember that, which I used to think was terrible. And I used to say to them, don't make things worse by catching too many fish or too many abalone. <laughs> and don't attempt to bribe the policemen if they stop you, <laughs> as you might do in Vietnam and so on. But it was good, it was wonderful. And, and of course, in those days, they arrived in their, their old cars, old Datsuns and so on. And now I think most of you Vietnamese drove, drive Mercedes Benzes, don't you? And, and all these wealthy looking cars. But it was a learning experience for me. I'd never in my priesthood before um, had been given bunches of flowers, for example. We'd never do that in normal circumstances, give men flowers, but I thought that was beautiful. And um, it was a wonderful experience for me. And it used to amuse me when, the, uh, when I did lots of Vietnamese weddings and before the the ceremony, the bride would dash into the confessional to make her confession. And in the confessional then, because I don't speak Vietnamese, they had a sheet that had the sins on it and people would go, that's the second, that, that, that's the second question. And they go like this, they've committed five sins or something like that. And then I would give them a penance, I'd say the third prayer, three times, whatever. But anyway, it was different. But it was the, the devotion of the people was extraordinary. And I admired them so much coming from such difficult circumstances because most were boat, boat people in those days. And I think they were met at the airport by Archbishop, uh, well, who then became Archbishop Hickey, but he, uh, he was Monsignor Hickey and uh, Archbishop Foley, who had a great love particularly for them. You find difficult to contact Vietnamese people then? No, 
I don't think so. I was extremely lucky as a young man. I went to Rome when I was 19 to an international college. And in our college, there were Vietnamese. The one in my class was called Phan Thun Mai, for example. And there were others too as well. And, and we were introduced to the different cultures. And now I think the strength of the church in Australia is made up from people from Asia greatly, the majority really. If you go to the cathedral, for example, probably 70% of the people are from Vietnam or the Philippines or from Africa or South America and so on. So I think that was a, a wonderful thing. At any time after Mass, you stay and talk with them because uh, the older generation, they uh, hardly did. speak English. They, well, that, they no, speak they didn't, sign language. <laughs> yes. They didn't speak much English. And I spoke no Vietnamese. It's a very difficult language to learn. And, uh, and it was, it was but, but very beautiful. And, and uh, I grew to love the Vietnamese so that now I went to a Vietnamese wedding. I instructed and I've been back to Vietnam three times, both to Saigon and to Hanoi and other places as well. So I hope to go back again before I die. <laughs> yes, our people, they have a um, culture of um, paying uh, quite a lot of respect to religious people. So when they talk and they, uh, their attitude, uh, their position like this, you know, very respectful. How do you find that? Well, as you know, Australia is a very equal country <laughs> and, and I, I, I feel embarrassed if people are too obsequious is the word, you know, if they're too, because every person is a person made in the image of God and whatever age or whatever nationality. But the Vietnamese have made a great contribution here. I found, for example, uh, for many years, the Vietnamese were the top students in Western Australia and from our schools. And um, I, I used to take camps and I had Vietnamese boys, some three nephews of Father Francis Lee came with me. And they were great sportsmen. They could become professional sportsmen, but their parents weren't interested in them becoming sportsmen. They became chemists or doctors. So education is very central to the Vietnamese culture, isn't it? Yeah. And while we were there, have you noticed of the uh, activities of the uh, young children? Because the, uh, 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 the Eucharist... Uh, youth I did, I did. In fact, I think that's the strength of the Vietnamese community, is the catechism that used to take place, I presume it still does, before Mass. And, and therefore the Vietnamese as a group are better catechized, better understand their faith than some of the other groups in our nation. I think that's a very important thing because education also as, uh, as catechists, as Catholics, is very important. Mm. Here at uh, the moment, we, every weekend we have around more than 200 kids coming here. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and we hope one day in the future, the um, uh, organization, the Vietnamese Catholic community, will be placed into their hands. Yes, and we want a few more priests from the Vietnamese community too, thanks. Because when I was chaplain, there were no priests, uh, Vietnamese priests, but Father Francis, you told me, had just been ordained, but he wasn't the chaplain until Archbishop Hickey came along who appointed him as chaplain. Mm. Yeah, after his ordination, he, uh, he served as uh, assistant to uh, Leaderville Parish oh, first. Oh, that's right, yes. And then to the Old Saint in Warwick. That's right, for yes. For some times. He was, that's yeah. right, yes. And then after that, he came back to Highgate Yes. and assist you, not, yes. not, uh, not chaplain, yes, but um, to assist you in some way. And yes. then after that, I don't know when, um, yes. he, he was appointed uh, chaplain. Yes, yes. I've had many Vietnamese assistant priests. Father Joseph Tran was a, an extraordinary assistant priest and I'm still very sad about his, his passing, his death. And uh, me, me, Father uh, Michael Quindo, parish priest of uh, Cloverdale, and many others, wonderful men. I find with the Vietnamese priests, they're neither right wing or left wing. They're middle of the road, which is good. So they are very good pastors. 
very good pastors. Mm. Do you have anything else to uh, uh, mark, <laughs> to say about uh, our uh, community? I think I've told, said a lot already, <laughs> but <laughs> no, I, I just have a great admiration yeah, yeah. and I love Vietnamese food. Yes, I wish that uh, you will come here more often uh, <laughs> after the, uh, the Feast of the uh, Vietnamese Martyrs yes. at the end of the month. Yes. And we hope we can see you again. Um, thank you, Monsignor, um, and God bless you. Thank you, Nam, and God bless you and all the community. Thank you. Để con nhận ra tiếng Tìm nơi đâu, nơi con tim u mơ Bàn chân con cô đơn giữa dòng đời Xin cho con được nhận ra Chúa Trên con đường lập lờ gió ngàn trôi Chúa ơi, nơi tim con khao khát chờ con xin trao về ngài ngày khi vui hay khi thất bại giữa dòng đời đầy bon chen xin cho con nhận ra tiếng chúa